I am unashamed. What about you? All right, welcome back to Unashamed. We still got no Zach. He's somewhere over, somewhere in the fruited plains, being a movie mogul. As far as we know, we don't even. He's in L.A., so uh, you know, give him a. He may need to be in our prayers. You That's know. right. <laughs> They're swimming with the sharks, I guess. Ooh. Hmm. The Lord that, works in strange way. I mean, even with us, with our show, you know, we we basically held hands with Hollywood <laughs> to try to come up with a show that depicted Christ-like principles, yeah. even though it wasn't a show about Jesus. It was just we're we're spirit-filled people. They're filming us, and so uh, you know, a lot of the problems we had is they were trying to get us to leave our spirit-filled qualities and just do a show. And we were like, well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. This because is- they they see the world in compartments, so they're thinking, yeah, we'll just step out of that and get over yep. into this world. But uh, to God's credit, we didn't budge on that, which is maybe one of the reasons – you know, success happens. That's right. So we that so Zach, we send it since he's the, I guess he's the 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 smarter of our little troop here. We send him out to deal with that part of the the world. Uh, well, and I did bring up that C.S. Uh, Lewis movie last podcast because yep. I do think this the movie about Phil does mirror that in that you see very few movies, well that are Christ based anyway, but you see very few religious movies that just deal with before yeah they became a christian right so uh it's that's tricky because it's, obviously that is not rated g yeah cuz it's gritty and real which is which yeah. is the and real. i noticed that 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 movie uh the cs lewis movie was rated pg13 yeah for the same reason brother yeah whether yeah, and he was in the war too. They had a few wars. So. But you know, I think, <clears throat> and you know, there's been several movies that have kind of people look at as kind of watershed movies. But I think the Passion, which has now been you know out a long time, but that really was the watershed movie. That, that movie's rated R, and it, and you know what, it needed to be. It has to be. When you read the end of the Gospels, Dad, your famous thing, read the last two chapters of the Gospel. You know what that's rated R. What they did to Jesus is rated R. Yes. It's brutal. Well, when you read the Old Testament, it's rated R. Rated R. There's no doubt about it. So I know that offends people when you say that it, that way because that's a man-made rating. But I'm saying by that standard, it's yeah. uh, it's brutal. I mean, it's a brutal. brutal. Well, it's funny. We were going to do a top 10 uh, Westerns. I think I've got it have. right here. So my Well, I think, now look. The it should be. So we shouldn't got, even read it. I don't want to give them credit. <laughs> but we don't know where, exactly where it came from. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they, you can't. Here's my. We're having an argument here, and arguments are fun. You can't have a top ten westerns by whomever. Whomever. If you leave out the greatest western ever, which I also think it was rated R, but you can watch the TV version. It's not even on the list, Al. So this list should be burned. <laughs> we'll burn it. It should not be given. We'll burn it, but I've got to read Don't it. Don't do it. It I'm doesn't it. <laughs> have the outlaw Josie Wells on it. It's not on there, which is the first thing I look for when it, when I got it. But, but we'll Al, see. Th- this has no bearing. They have lost all credibility. So according to some people, this is the top 10 Westerns ever made. Number 10, 310 to Yuma. Which is interesting. They have the 2007 version, which was the remake with Russell Crowe, but the original had Yul Brenner. Do you remember that? The original. Yeah, but I love I love that movie. I love the Russell Crowe. Uh, I thought version. the I thought the remake was actually better than the original. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was good. And the other little guy, what's his name? The little short little actor. He was really good at it too. Um, the Magnificent Seven. Loved it. Loved the remake better. And they had the original. Denzel Washington. Yeah, they, I like the original. And uh, Chris Pratt was in the remake, too. I like the remake better. It's good. A Fistful of Dollars. Yep. 64. That was a Eastwood. That was you a got good the one. Fistful of Dollars and you don't have Outlaw Josie Wells. <laughs> High Noon, 1952. Haven't seen that. I don't remember who that I don't either. The Wild Bunch, 1954. 
1969. Butch cast in the Sundance Kid, also 69. That was I pretty mean, was that really a Western? I guess it was. It was. Yeah. Django Unchained. Haven't seen it. 2012. I've seen it. It's, I don't know. Unforgiven. Yeah, that was, was good. Excellent. It was good. That was Eastwood's kind of finale, yeah. his swan song. Once Upon a Time in the West, number two. No, that, I agree with that. That's a great one. That that was uh, pow, pow, pow. Henry Fonda and uh, the Harmonica. Charles Bronson. Charles it's Bronson. real slow. Look, Missy almost, that came up on the little whatever. And uh, I said, one of the greatest movies ever. She said, let's watch it. I said, you're not going to like this movie. She said, no, I like it. Well, I mean, I, I said, babe, you are not, it's really slow. It is a slow movie. It's mo- slow an awesome mo- movie. But she, she got mad at me because I said, I know she's gonna get thirty minutes into it. What's the harmonica? Why is he blowing? Why? Why is he? Why is he on the harmonica? Wait for it. But you got to wait two and a half hours for it. Even the fly scene is long, but it's so worth oh, it. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome. Old bug eyes. <laughs> that, that you want to? Yeah. Ernest Borgnine. Yeah. That when no, he no. when he caught that oh, fly because this is the kind of stuff we do in a duck blind. Yeah. Stuff like that, and uh, you know, he's looking at that. Trying to see if that fly, he was shaking that barrel to see if that fly, and then he would smile, you know. Was that just an Italian? Yeah, Want to go in the barrel? He, he listening to him. Then, mm. the, then, it, then it stopped. He went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's looking. <laughs> so they had that as number they had two. The, the water dripping on the hat. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Number one. Well, I would put that in the top five, obviously. Which again, but you left out two two movies. That is the travesty. We're gonna, we're gonna throw that away since you, that was throw it away because you left out the outlaw Josie Well, and they should have had a fit one of Phil's favorites, Valdez. Is Valdez coming. is coming. Yeah, I have so, used the line in that movie hundreds of times in various places from Walmart to gas stations to conflicts and, you know, events I've done that, you know, I'm like $200 for the family. (laughs) You know, it's a standard price that, which he was, he was asking for a hundred dollars. I mean, this, they had done something wrong. They killed this, this woman's, husband i don't want to give away the whole movie but since she was not a person you know it was a, it's really about uh you know racism and and she, she was just an indian woman and nobody cared for her. but he was like he was an ex lawman and he was like this is just not right you, you made a mistake and everybody just went oops and and swept it under the the rug and he's like you should pay this. Well, at least do something for your crime. There should be payment here. And so he was trying. He was trying to get two hundred dollars for the injustice that had happened to her. That's what the whole movie is about. Oh yeah. So I, you know, another they finally one. got him hemmed up, and and the, and the standoff. You know, and I don't, don't don't give away the whole movie, Phil, yeah, because it's good. Yeah. It is good. Uh, Tombstone is another one that probably should have been on the list. It should be just because of the lines that I mean, are it, in it. In terms of writing and lines, and, and some of the performances were... I mean, it was a little cheesy, but it was yeah. a little over the top. I mean, these more realistic ones are, I don't say real, realistic, just the kind of the spaghetti Western type. I mean, I just like, once upon a time in the West and the good, bad, and the ugly, it's just hard to top that. I don't know. It, the, the camera work and the the music, and yeah. it was just on another level. Yeah, and but but you know you made a good point. They were long, and they were they were kind of slow. They were tied together with scenes, you know, like dramatic. well, it's what's not happening in movies today, and I do think that's why the Chosen is so good. Is that you get lost in it, even though they're not that long. But it's like if you you can watch three episodes back to back. I watched three episodes last night, and Missy watches. She watches episodes every week. The same one. She goes back and and she because she gets lost in it, and through her faith, it's it's making uh you know what her faith is more realistic in in a in an emotional way in a connecting way. So uh, I think that's why it's so good. Yeah. It, it of course they have the you know a, 
a budget and the time and without any kind of uh, force over them that is that is neglecting what they can do. Right. So, uh, and that's the way movies used to be made. Now they just spit them out. They're just little, I mean, it's hard to find a good movie anymore. It, it, it's it's horrible. We're running out of good actors. Well, I think they're, they they whole, they no longer go to locations. Going back to the sixties, that that the last forty fifty years they're going in, they pretty well had it down. Well, and that's why they're. Well, re- you have good actors. They just they do it at, at a. They don't go to locations anymore. Yeah, I mean, they went all those movies we just talked about. They went all over the place, right. making making it look realistic. They just have a set and they go in there and spit it out, and they film it in a couple months, edit it. Well, and then like this tragedy that happened to this Alec Baldwin film. All this happened because they were trying to do it cheap and fast, and mm-hmm. so they hired people obviously that weren't up to standard, and and they, you know, tragedy strikes. That was dumb. Yeah, you ha- have these terrible things that happen. So, I mean, they were trying to do a western there, but you saw they were doing. It. They were trying to create the whole thing in this one little bitty place, and yeah. you know, didn't have quality people there either. So, I mean, look, I I'm doing currently a show, you know, the treasure hunting show, and y'all been. Our, you know, our listeners have been instrumental in making, you know, season one a success. And we're working on season two. We're getting toward the end of, of filming season two. But it's Unashamed Nation is the reason there is a show. You know, it never would have happened. Y'all, y'all, are, y'all are doing it. And I'm, I'm really, you know, not regretting it, but I'm working my <laughs> rear off for y'all. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you. It's your fault, Unashamed Nation. The reason it's so challenging is because we are. Are going to these different you have locations. To go, yeah. And look, we're we send you know. It's gonna be a very interesting show if you're just doing the whole thing in your backyard, Jace. It's gonna get old. But on paper, you think, well, this is easy. You're going down there. When you go to a location where other people are involved on a weekly basis, you know it's just a series of challenges because you never really know till you get there. And you you know we're fine trying to find stuff in the ground, and whatever we find, we find it, it's really challenging. It's not the cheap easy way to do it. it it's we're doing it the hard way so maybe there is something to that translating to good tv you know right so well and look you 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 go into it like any production with ideas and here's what we want to accomplish but in the case of a show like your show some things are happening in real time that you didn't plan on and exactly. so they, then you got to run that thread that's, out that's the way it's for it's really it's it's really challenging i mean like because some places we go we think it's gonna be a slam dunk we're just gonna be finding all these treasures and it's never discovered and then you get there and you're like what happened either somebody's been here before <laughs> or so then what you do well you pivot yeah and there's been some locations we went and we left we just said no nope, yep, didn't, not, didn't there, pan there's out nothing here so uh well, i'm really Looking forward to watching the episode I was on, and not just because I'm on it, but because of all the things that happened that I wasn't involved in, just because it's really uh, interesting. So, yeah, I think that was one of the better ones. There was a lot of things. What's weird about that is we that was kind of one we had a plan on. Yeah, and a lot of interesting and things. And a lot of things yeah. happened that were not planned, and you saw how it happened. All of a sudden, we just went with it. Yeah. This is, this is, Became the story. I know. I'm excited to to see that on on the screen. So we appreciate your your hard work, guys. I'm glad we get to work around it. Uh, let's take a break. So we know uh, we started a small business. You want your small business to become a bigger business, and one day to be a big business. That's how we grow. Uh, that's how we pass it on to uh, the future. And uh, one of our sponsors is a group called NetSuite. And uh, they help give you the visibility and the control you need to make better decisions faster. And that's what we need to grow a business. For the first time in NetSuite's 22 years as the number one cloud financial system, you can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. So there's no payment, no interest for six months. Uh, You can take advantage of this special financing offer today. Um, They're going to give you full NetSuite implementation for six months They're number one because they give your business everything you need in real time and in one place to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity across every department. And that's the best that they do. They pull it all together for you. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, 
They've gained visibility and control over their financials, their inventory, their HR, and their e-commerce, and much more. So if you've been sizing NetSuite up to make the switch, you know this deal is unprecedented. No interest, no payments. Take advantage of this special financing offer at netsuite.com slash fill. N-E-T-S-U-I-T-E, netsuite.com slash fill. Get the visibility and control you need to weather any storm. netsuite.com slash fill. So uh, we've uh, expanded our staff a little bit. So we've, uh, since Zach is not here, um, we've come up with a new a new segment, Jay's. When uh, Zach normally comes up with a big word. I'm glad y'all consulted me about the new segment. Yeah, we're, we just. First time I'm hearing it. I know. We're going to throw this in. This is, the new segment is called Jace's Word of the Week. Jace's Word Jace's of the Week. Jace's Word of the Do Week. Do you have a word? I have a word. Uh, well, here's of, my question. One of our crack staff has come if up with this word. If it's my word for the week, wouldn't I be the one coming up with the word? No, no. This word will be given to you, and then you can then you can decide whether you want to use it or I'm not. I'm not sure I like this arrangement. <laughs> and normally, we've been doing this naturally because Zach will come up with your word of the week, but now one of our staff is doing it. So here's the word. Okay. Antinomianism. Anti. Can you use it in a sentence? I can. So. Anti what? Antinomianism. Nomianism. Never heard Are of the word. Are there any here's, other... I've been on the earth 76 years. And are there any other? Do you want me to define it or using the same are, are there any other pronunciations of the word? No, this is it. Uh, and, you've never figured out why I do this. This is a reference to the spelling bee that happens every year. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get it. So here's here, here th- this word. Here's it used in a sentence. In his 19, oh, no, excuse me. In his 1539 book, Luther contrasts antinomianism with the true gospel, stressing that law is good and drives us to Christ and to daily repentance. So that's well, that's it in a sentence. That is true, and that is good, because we can't keep the law. But I think we need to simplify that. <laughs> All right, here's the I'm, definition. It's a noun, antinomianism. It's, it's, it's a theology. It's the belief that Christians by virtue of divine grace, are freed not only from biblical law and church-prescribed behavioral norms, but also from all moral law. The problem I have with these scholars and these people that come up with these words is that the definition doesn't, it doesn't match the word. I mean, first of all, I don't like anti. I mean, when I usually see anti, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> The Antichrist. You're anti, anti. Well, and now this anti is anti- a positive. Nomianism. So we need a uh, we need to shorten this up. <clears throat> so I would this say is Jay's shortening up his word of the week. Antinomianism, and usually isms a bad thing. Yep. So you got two. You know, you what's don't your like... little rift on isms? Yeah. What do you think? You, say about you, isms. What, what's your ism? Uh, I've forgotten. <laughs> Oh man, that, it's one of my favorite things you do. Oh, oh, oh. just looking at it uh, <laughs> logically, having studied the Bible to you know to great extent. In other words, always remember this: stay away from the isms. <laughs> do not get gathered up in the isms. Hollow philosophy, and that's the isms. They just put well, that. My, what well, are your two isms you you hang on? You said you hang on baptism and capitalism. <laughs> yeah, baptism yeah. and capitalism. Well, I think he said capitalism, and I think Missy's the one that said, well, what about baptism? And Phil went, okay, we'll add That's that one to it. the list. Yeah. That one's in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Off away from the isms. Yeah. So it does have an anti and an ism is it, in it, and uh, so I don't. Sh- I'm not sure how I could – I could uh, shorten this word up, stressing that the law is is good in that it drives us to Christ to daily repentance. So, so Luther was he didn't agree with it. I don't guess he didn't. It doesn't sound like he did. He was in, he was not a. Well, I thought that's what it was saying. No, he was saying he was against that. 
he, he believed in moral, the idea of moral law. He says the gospel drives us to do the right thing is what he Well, that's, that's what I thought this was. No, it's saying you don't have to do anything. Oh. Basically, basically, well, it's this not a pause. Well, I was agreeing no, with a, what Luther said. Right. Well, Luther is well, saying. Why would he I want to use this word if it's not? It's just. I it was, <laughs> so just take out the anti so, and the ism, and I think you have it. <laughs> nomian. You're you're a nomian. I'm a nomian. You're a nomian. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I would simply say nomian. to that guy what he came up with there. <laughs> Nominism. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. So it's it's a little it's a little bit uh, tricky when you when you read it that way. You know, there, you know, when Jesus said, "My blood." will remove your sins, you are going to have to die to the law of sin. Die to that. And you're given God's spirit, the law of the spirit of life. For what the law was powerless to do and that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful men in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not have, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. So we're not under a law, Correct. except it's the law. We died to it when we were baptized. We died to the law and was buried, and we come up sealed with the spirit. Now we live by the law of the spirit. Every little j- detail Every little mistake is not counted against you. Get up. Let's go. Let's go. Keep going. Keep going. You know, you have God's spirit in you. You know, that we make mistakes. He prepared us for that. So he, he's there 24-7. He's not holding your sins against you. Make it your ambition to do good. Be good. Love God. Love your neighbor. When you blow it and you make a mistake, he's at the right hand of the Father. It's called grace, and it's far better than carrying out beginning with the law of Moses, far greater. Well, it's, and it's the Romans 6. He said, you know, when Paul said, we've died to sin, how, how, how do we live any longer? That's we don't it. because That's we it. died to that. Exactly. He gives you a time and a place where that took place. He does. Pretty it, cool. It is very cool, And which is was Luther's point. He says that's what that's what living by the Spirit means. Yep. Your point, the way you put it, is we live for good. We that's don't it. live for evil. Just do good. That's exactly right. Which, By the way, when you when you get to where you where you're headed with First Peter, yep, that's where uh, we're headed. First Peter three eight. Pretty interesting, you know. Whoever you are called, so that you may inherit a compassionate and humble love, and brother, whoever will live and will see good days and keep his tongue from evil and his speech, he must turn from evil when you come to Christ and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. Just go around doing good. How can you blow it? God's made it, relatively speaking, easy for us. He's 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 he's, he's taken away having to be perfect. He said, "I am your perfection. I'll I'll pay for your sin. So all you do, just turn from evil and do what's good." I gave I've given two lessons in a row, White's Ferry Road one, and actually there was a there was a slight standing ovation after I gave that the other day. And isn't it amazing out of something as simple as that, and yet it's profound in our in our world today. But, you know, you see these— The whole uh, book of Titus is just that. Do good, 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 do good. Do good. Well, Every amazing. angle. And, it, it well, it, it's amazing, Dad, because it stands out so much now because there's, there's whole swaths of the country where you have people that they don't even know what good is anymore. <laughs> no, that's right. It's, it's I, I, I got to reading through the Bible, and I saw so much about it. I said, you know what? We don't preach on just being good too much. I've never heard an in-depth lesson on it, I don't think. It is, right. I don't know why, but— uh, It's in there a lot, though. It's in there a whole lot. Right. 
Now, looking up this antinomianism <laughs> is uh, basically it was kind of saying you have a license to sin, you know, right. which is goes to that Romans 6. So we're nomads doing no men things <laughs> based on grace. That's right. <laughs> Nomads. How about that? Yeah. I'm trying to go to First Peter here. We're strangers, aliens, nomads. That's it. Doing no men think grace filled things based on grace. I mean Romans six I think would be the answer to the anti nominalist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just made up another word. <laughs> See, all we needed was the word of the day, and now Jesus yeah. is expanding the book. Usually, light words that long because you I can't mean, use it. In think how many times, Art, you're living a, you're following Jesus faithfully. How many times will this come back? Come, come, you'd have to deal with it. Do not repay evil with evil, or insult with for insult. Yeah, you're somebody, in, somebody you're in not, First Peter three nine. Yeah. yeah. In other words, you, you you say, well, you know, I have to have an answer for somebody when you disagree with him. And so you, he insults you, so you come back and insult him. And you've seen it in all your life on how that just mushrooms into worse and worse. They, you think you have to, to do that. But just your response would be with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessed. Whoever would love life and see good days, keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. All those things are there, but that's way better being in a situation where you're not under law, where one one misstep, you're dead, and everybody is there at some point in their life. Well, and his overall theme and, is I mean, the submission. You'd say, well, how much better is it now? What I do now since I've obeyed the gospel, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he'll raise me from there. But what what I need to do? And you're like, good. They're like, what? I said, just do good. You'll be all right. Yeah, but I think it's in how the— How hard it, could that be? It, it, well, it evidently is harder than, oh, than you think. Is it But harder? I'm saying I think what's hard about it is he has this under the headings of these different ways you submit. Yep. You know, in Chapter 2, I mean, he was talking about even it's very difficult to submit to the governing authorities, obviously. It's very hard to submit, if, especially if you're in a work environment where— you're being mistreated. You, yeah, you, you're Somebody being mistreated. Somebody comes to me and says, what about that old Jason, old Jason Robertson down there? Or what about old Al Robertson? <coughs> what, about old, what about old Zach? You say, they're good. They do good. You say, what? You say, they, they're good men. What about this woman? She's a, I said, she's a good woman. Good woman. And instead of th- thrashing through the thickets to look for mistakes... You just are saying, do good. You're doing good. Don't, don't let it get you down. Hey, life's full of trouble. Short and full of trouble. Just do good. Well, he gives some good int- reputation. Let's take a break, dude. So in this podcast, we talk a lot about eternal life insurance, but also it's important to talk about life insurance, uh, especially I'm getting at that age, Dad, where I have to, be thinking ahead for my family and uh, wanting to make sure that they're taken care of, uh, Lisa especially. You never know uh, who's going to go first, but I want to make sure that, that, that I'm taken care of and covered. So one of our sponsors is a group called Policy Genius, and uh, they're really helping us to be able to find life insurance. Um, they're going to help us find the best deals. Um, with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start – at just $39 a month with $2 million worth of coverage. Some options uh, offer coverage as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. They were built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers with just a few clicks to find your lowest price. They've got licensed agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means that they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. There's no added fees. Your personal details are private. So they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. 
Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net, and you deserve a smarter way to find and to buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash Phil, or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Phil. Well, it gives some interesting qualities, especially under the submission guys here, because he's saying be sympathetic, which is not my first instinct in any situation. <laughs> I mean, these are hard oh, things. These are lessons to be learned, though, Jason. Yeah, lesson to be learned here. And it's and, and you're on it. something. What did you say? What was the problem? Sympathetic. He said, finally. All, so he has the yeah. the situations with you know the the classes. He's done that, about that we, four or five things. Yeah, he gets to wives and husbands. Yeah. I mean, this is a. This would be a suitcase sermon. Oh, it's a brutal, culture, brutal stretch. Which oh. is why people, scholars, do not cover this. Right. Yeah. But uh, but it's under the guise of you know suffering for doing the right thing and being in bad situations and still finding your your faith in Christ in this and whether you're being insulted or persecuted or mistreated or and you know just people don't like this. This is not. This is not stuff that people are sitting in the pew saying, "Oh, this sounds great." When, when this your name, awesome. When your name comes up on the board, when your name, what about this person? You look and you say, "They do a lot of good. They do some a lot of good work. They, they're good, good people." Yeah, but Phil, it's what a, is that based statement. on? It, it's based on, you know, God has. He's cha- transform your heart to be. They don't. They're unselfish. not being good to be saved. They're doing the good because they are saved. Well, exactly. That's the difference. Well, even that thought for, for sympathy, just live in harmony <clears throat> with one another. This sometimes it's hard for people to grasp because they don't know what a harmony is. But we we all grew up and sing an acapella. We know what harmony means. Harmony means when voices come together that sound good. That's harmony. Yep. People know how to sing. But when you look at neighborhoods, there's not a lot of harmony. Not much harmony. Going on. It's a lot of uh, screechy. Well, virtually no harmony. <laughs> it's screaming. It's, it's screaming and yelling and yeah. yow shooting and it, I mean it's it's chaos. Yeah. But look at the qualities he's saying. Love his brothers, be compassionate and humble. No, because now he's just addressing humanity. I mean, he had right. the different situations, the most difficult things in the classes of people, the government, the, in marriages where things are tough. And, but it's the same qualities. You humble yourself, you're compassionate, you're sympathetic. I mean, these are not easy things to do. So then it goes on to say, well, don't repay evil with evil, which is very, if we just followed this rule, society would be way better. Oh, good right. Insult with insult. Somebody insults you, what do you do? You insult them back. But with blessing... Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So it tells you a lot of reasons why people are not receiving blessings from God. I think the point is, Jace, and it's a good one, verse 13 when you get to it, who's going to harm you if you're eager to do good? Well, there has to be an answer. There has to be an answer. Who's going to harm you? Well, a lot of people, but I think a lot of people. A lot of people have a lot of trouble when they're going around insult for insult and they up in your face, yeah, 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 women and stuff and all this stuff, how they got to be dressed and it's a yeah, yeah. But I, well, I think he's sarcastic. Who's going to harm you? I think he's sarcastically saying (laughs) that it's a reference to when, this is my opinion, I could be wrong, but when he said, uh, you know, you remember when he was sent out the 12 and he was going to give them this new power, but he was like sending them out with no weapons, yeah. no food. And, well, you know, they're looking around like. It's to have a man uh, for himself. Uh, <laughs> this could go bad. I mean, could, you <laughs> know, uh, one of the episodes of The Chosen I watched depicted that. And they were like, one of them said, I mean, we could be killed. <laughs> 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 it wasn't funny, but it you could tell they really captured that moment. You know what the cause, kicker cause is? It hit them. You, you, the person that's writing this, as far as we can tell, Jesus told them how he was going to die, and it was brutal. It's well, a, exactly. And you say, these were people, most of these people died for the cause. Well, exactly. But it, Who's going but, to... 
having that say, hit them. It's not like they're not out there to, waiting for you. And it would happen not long after he wrote But that. his yeah. response, if you'll remember, was he said, don't be you know, afraid of those who can kill the body, but those who can kill the soul and throw it into hell. I think it's the same vein here. Who's going to harm you? I mean, the whole thing is about people harming you. There's a lot of people that's going to harm you, but he's saying you you have a protector in heaven. In the end, because he goes on to say, but even if you should suffer, if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. Yep. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. I think it's the same. So how do you not fear what they fear? Well, most people fear physical death. That's how people take over the world. Yeah. You, that's what terrorists are all about. They go in there and they threaten your way of life by killing you. But even even the fear... Let's take another break. Even the fear, Jason, of injustice and being wronged, people, there's a deep fear people have of like, I don't want to exactly. be taken advantage of. I mean, you see Plus, people, you can't go they across, get angry about which, that. Well, they can't go across the land with a Bible in one hand and just, just ripping to shreds every body and everything. It's evil. Oh, you, at some point, you know, he's going to get down. I just, you know, you, you set apart. Christ but, is Lord. But before you get that, but look, people don't people in the in the audience at churches don't like a sermon saying, "Look, be prepared for injustice, because then you're being like Jesus." Yeah. Well, nobody wants that, right? Well, I no, I didn't sign up for this. Right. We need to do something about this, yeah. and and that that's that's what I said. People are not being sympathetic uh, when you apply this to that. I'm talking about injustice and. I mean, it, it's just not happening. But his Especially whole point, Jay's today, and our because yeah. this idea of social justice is is fueling. And look, I'm not talking about just in the world. I'm talking about churches. They, what you wouldn't they, want they, to, have, they have bought into this thing. Oh, exactly. Into this, you know, message. it's like you walk up and you know, and some poor little old lady walks in there and looks down, and some visitors have sat down where she usually sits, and she said, "You, you need to move. This is where I sit." And they're like, do, do what? I mean, you, you you tell somebody they have to be seated somewhere else because where they're seated is where you are seated every Sunday morning, and they make an issue of it. That's a bad. That's a bad. Oh, that's, that's terrible. You're not doing good there. You're stirring up trouble that you don't. <laughs> and you and, you, and, it's, and you're the bad guy when you're like, well, that's just a little old lady there. No, that's you're entrenched. You, you so don't do that. Don't be that. Yeah. So then he says, if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. That's just a very hard teaching. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. Which uh, this is, has a quote from Isaiah eight twelve. I don't know if you've looked at that, but is that a quote from Isaiah eight twelve? I guess it is. Yeah, in fact, uh, we had quoted earlier in that same Isaiah eight fourteen was um, earlier in First Peter 2, the stone that causes men to oh. stumble. Oh, yeah, this is good. Yeah, that was Let me a- read this. It says, so verse 11 says, The Lord spoke to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of the people, which is just, we could just leave it there, mm. you know? Yeah. I mean, because you're getting your, the way you, you're, who you're following is from the Lord. Yeah. He said, do not call conspiracy everything that these people call conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. I mean, that's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. No, and it's that, it, that's that same thing about following the crowd. Is the concept and the idea. Well, and the conspiracy. And basically, look, even our nation, it's a divided nation, and you're just ganging up on each other, throwing haymakers. But, you know, in Christ, it's just different. And that is uh, that is the answer, Jason. I mean, that's why it's the, earlier when he talks about a holy nation, it's it's a nation within a nation. The, the unifier is Christ. And the politics are, are secondary. 
when you get yeah. that out of whack, when you, you start talking in terms of election cycles instead of and what drives it all, Al? Conspiracies. That's exactly right. And, and I mean, look, there is. You just go to any social media outlet. I hadn't been there in a while, but and you'll find the I latest. I haven't been there ever. The latest <laughs> conspiracy. You know. So you have this. So let's just take what just happened. So somebody looks up and says, "Hey, there's a balloon over South Carolina." <laughs> And so pe- people are like, well, there's a conspiracy. Where I guarantee it's from China. And well, it turns out it was from China. Yep. So then what happened was the pressure mounted on the White House because they're like, China has sent a balloon over here and it's spying on us. Went all the way across the country. So then all of a sudden, everybody's like, well, they, I mean, people are running out in the streets. We're being watched. <laughs> the goal. And look, you had a battle. On the two, wherever, which side of the argument you were on, because I was thinking in the back of my mind, we ought to shoot that thing down. I mean, I was just completely thinking as a U.S. citizen, because you didn't ask our. And permission. if it had come over your house, if it had been low enough, you would have gladly shot it down. Nominate me. <laughs> I'm good. Look, some people are good at long shots. I'm like, I would have a love. To set up with a sniper rifle, let's and, that, and that. let's just all do it as it, you know, have some fire. And there would have been about a hundred million, a hundred million. Would have, it, that would have been a better way to do it. That's right. Send out a public service announcement. Whoever is interested as a U.S. citizen in bringing this down, bring your gun to the beach of South Carolina. <laughs> right. I'd have been, it'd been awesome. So the pressure mounts. So guess what? They shoot it down because it politically, they're like, I mean, you can't. Well, the, the crowd is getting restless, you know. So then what I'm saying is then all the conspiracies come up, because uh, I asked Missy the other day, I said, are they still talking about that balloon? She said, oh, yeah, they shot it down. I was like, I wasn't even aware they shot it down. Oh, yeah, and they're looking for it, because I, I was thinking, well, that's a TV show up, uh, idea. Yeah. But dang it, they're already looking for it. Yeah. I could see Cy si saying, all right, boys, <laughs> I got a mission for I you. I wonder what the final yeah. remains of the balloon looked like. Well, I'd love to know. But what I was saying is more conspiracy, because uh, people got mad, angry. It made good TV. All the news channels oh, went yeah. to it. It, it, it all. And, Where's it at today? So when you think about a passage like this, you know, you cut, you, you don't look. I, I think it's it's okay to give your opinion on it. I gave mine. You know, I'd have shot it down way. Well, the God way of sooner. heaven is placed in a position where the 7.2 billion are under his watch at all times. But my that was my point. I was I'm not going to panic cuz China's spying on us. By the way, this isn't the first time China's spying on the US. Oh, exactly. No. <laughs> well, I got a news flash for you. They got satellites coming over. Oh, well, so I'm all saying the time. take it for what it is, but look, if you're out with a sign over this on the street and you're hollering, you you, you You've missed something here about life. That's right. You, you know, but I, look, there, uh, there are people doing that. Oh yeah. That, that, and so I think there's Be a prepared difference. Prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Just you don't have to just beat them over the head with it. Well, and that that verse really does crystallize well, our response. But it also says, "Set apart Christ as Lord." I mean. Right. Your your Jesus, Jesus is our message. It, it's not a we're not we're not going out here sharing our views on you know the political s- spectrum. You're you're sharing Jesus. You're introducing Jesus. And Jesus changes how we view the kingdoms and the earth and what's beyond the earth. That that's why you know a sister passage to this First Peter is we don't grieve like the rest of men. That's right. We don't fear like the rest of men, and we don't grieve like the rest of men. Because what happens? People die. Right. Christians die. Uh, suffering happens. People, Christians die from unjust suffering. And you say, well, how, are you going to grieve? Well, I'm not going to grieve like the rest of men. And sometimes, what, what is implied there? Sometimes if you point someone to Jesus, although he doesn't think anything about it too much and doesn't move on it, but this dude... This happened in the past. I found out here yesterday or today before. But finally, this guy, all of a sudden, he has five years after 
I, I don't know what I said about Jesus, but I pointed him to Jesus for some reason because he was a human being. So five years later, he has a massive heart attack, survives the heart attack. He said, the first place I went when I could get on my feet was the church building and tell them I wanted to obey the gospel right then. He said, it woke me up. But at least he had, I gave him the opportunity to what he ought to do before he had the heart attack. When he had the heart attack, he moved on it which I thought, you know what, that's a good ending. Well, it's, it's funny, Dad, because uh, let's take our last break. Um, yesterday after I, I preached, I was meeting some, we had a lot of people visiting, you know, yep. went to your class and were there. And so uh, there was a- Yeah, general, that was a good group, by the way. Yeah, it was great. And uh, one guy came up to me. All over the United States. Mm-hmm. One guy came up to me and he said- uh, you know, when y'all filmed your, we all were filming your other show, your duck show. He said, do y'all remember filming an episode up on Lake Darbo? I said, yeah, I, I remember that. I was in that episode. And he said, well, I had the little house right next to the house that y'all were, that was your lake house. You know, he kind of did the air quotes because we didn't really have one, but they had a set up in one. And uh, he said, I was in the house. And he said, of course, I was, he said, I was a drunk back then. He said, I used to drink a fifth of whiskey every day. He said, so I was drunk the whole time y'all were there. He said, but I met some of y'all's family. He said, but I tried to meet your youngest brother, but he wouldn't have anything to do with me. I said, really? I said, he said, yeah. He said, it's probably because I was drunk. <laughs> and I said, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. And I, I wasn't sure where this was going. And he said, you know, I just wanted to come today and apologize about that. He said, I got my life straightened out. I came to Christ. He said, I've been sober for a year and two weeks. He said, and I just wanted to come and apologize to your family. He said, you know, I wish I'd have been sober back then. It would have been a lot more fun <laughs> to watch y'all film that episode. I said, well, man, I said, I'm glad you're here today. I said, I'm glad you're sober, and I, I accept your apology yeah. for the family. And I said, when I see old Jepico, I'll tell him. You never know where the word is going to I reach. mean, he felt compelled to drive to, to our church to tell me that. And, and I, you know, well, I wanted him to know. I, you that's know, why I you that. shouldn't be afraid to tell somebody about Jesus. That's exactly you, you right. Know, well, it you goes in with what the text says you know the second part of uh 15 where it says but do this with gentleness and respect you know always give her give a reason and this is this is one of the few verses that i have memorized just by constant use yeah. but you know always be prepared to give an answer to everyone i ask you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in christ may be ashamed of their slander. So I think your three-point sermon, Al, is we don't fear what they fear. Yep. We don't grieve like they grieve. Yep. And we're unashamed, which that's what, you know, we're doing here. But when you look at the opposite of that, you being unashamed that Christ is Lord brings shame to people who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ. Yeah, that's right. And they look, we're, you're going to be slandered. I'm sure the guy who was drunk probably said a few slanderous things because that's well, what he, he probably did. he probably spoke ill of that's Jeff's what I'm saying. behavior Idiot. until until he realized it was him. It wasn't Jeff. That's right. And then he recognized it. And but it was funny, Jace, is you know at the end of my sermon I quoted this verse hmm. in my sermon because I because I said if people wonder what my purpose is in life, and then I just quoted this verse. Yeah, as here's my purpose. My purpose is when. I'm going to set apart Christ as Lord. And when someone asks me for the hope that I have, you know, I'm going to share it with them. And then, but I'm going to do it with gentleness and respect. And yep. I'm going to have a clear conscience, Yep. you know, and as I go forward. So, and it was funny, this, this gentleman had come that day to apologize for his behavior because he had spoken maliciously about yeah. one of our family that's, members. That's a, but it goes back to the that more. That makes that text sure come to it life. It really did. It all happened in one But shot. it's even more than gentleness and respect. He's giving you these qualities about living in harmony and being sympathetic and, uh, and humble and compassionate in these situations where even if you're suffering an injustice, you know, for the sake of Christ, he's like, you're going to be blessed because of that. And I mean, I take a lot of comfort in that. I mean, it's you know, it's it's hard to be bold, and I mean, we've been mocked and scared. I mean, you can go to any kind of social media platform, and you'll find you know half a dozen people throwing haymakers at us for whatever reason and making up most of it. But 
you know, that may have bothered me when I was, you know, 21. But at this stage, I realize that it's more a reflection on their condition on the earth. Look, if you don't have Jesus, you're basically trapped and doomed. Yeah. I mean, just think about your condition oh, without it's... a hope of the afterlife, without a hope of injustices being made right, uh, without a hope of forgiveness, of, of having a place where you belong, you know, this belonging. And it's right there in front of you. Yeah. Not having a community and a unity within that that's going to span forever. Well, well, no wonder you're throwing haymakers. It's a reflection of your own condition. That's right. I asked the, the guy yesterday, I said, well, what, what, what got to you? What, you know, what, what got you on the right path? What got you to Christ? He said, well, I was working off someplace. And um, he said, I was, I was crossing the street. He said, he said, you know, I was drunk. He said, I was crossing the street. I got hit by a car. He said, you know, and they took my spleen. They took this, that, and the other, and part of my pancreas. And he said, you know, he said, I realized laying there in that hospital bed that I got, I had one more shot to get this right if I survived it. If I didn't, I was a goner. And he said, so I told the Almighty laying on that bed, if, if I get out of this, I'm turning to you. And he, that would have been a year ago, and he did, and he turned it around. Now he said, "I said, well, that was your wake up call." He said, "Oh, I'm, I'm awake." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, good," but I, I mean, it was exciting because it was like you, you see what happens in people's lives, and you hope it doesn't have to come to that. Yeah. Somebody, well, I tell people that in my speeches. I'm like, "Why are you waiting to get for, run for, over to be forced?" Right. Which is what most people do. Most mm-hmm. people have to reach the bottom of the barrel. Before they cry out, that's why they start prison ministries or you know yep, different yep. things. When when you just if you if you go out there thinking that there's no consequences to life or your action and you're trying to do it your way, I mean we all know we all know we've yep. seen the movies. Yep, it always ends not well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and let's face it, there's no guarantee that you're going to make it through. That's the thing about it. And you're you're to know it's it's never an advantage to to walk the line to walk the thin line because no. you you know you, but people it's don't not make something it. you're just trying to you know pull you're not gonna pull the wool over over God's eyes He created you He knows you better than anybody and He wants your heart and what you're missing out on is you know this peace and life you know we're talking about peace and blessing and confidence and you know being prepared and I mean th- these are it it just gives you a better life, you know, right. It's because you know. You finally got hope. Who is going to harm you for doing good? I mean, the answer is no one ultimately because what we're in on is bigger than that. But in the short term, oh, you're going to you're going to be tortured. Yeah. You're going to suffer. But it's there's a peace that knowing that God's in control and that he loves us that carries us through. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. Well, we're out of time. We'll. um We'll finish this up uh, in the next podcast. We do have a little bit of overtime, so we'll uh, discuss this uh, a little bit more on the other side. If you want to follow us over, blazetv.com slash unashamed. If you want to sign up for our overtime as well as everything else that uh, Blaze has to offer. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.